Hello, this is Dr. Kevin Kirk, and today we're going to play with mass effects. Mass effects meaning something that actually has mass, like a box or a ball or some model, as opposed to some kind of sparks or smokes or some kind of particles. So I'll start with a ball right here, which is fine. Zoom out a bit, I think, and I'll raise it up. I want this ball to fall down. That'll be the first thing. There are three main types of mass effects. To get that panel, if you don't see it, go to the mass effects toolbar. I just right clicked on here. Now I'll open that up. Now when I have this selected, I can assign it. See it says set selected. And there are three different types. One type is the dynamic rigid body. Then we have a kinematic and a static. The dynamic means it's just moving and responding to what's around. In this case, gravity. Now the kinematic means you set up some keyframes and it calculates what happens from there. Maybe like launching a cow from a catapult or whatever. The static is like a brick wall. It just doesn't move. It can break, but it doesn't move. Dynamic rigid body, we'll do on this one. So it's dynamic. It can move around. Now if I play this and calculate this, it's going to start the simulation. But let's see what's going to happen. I'll go to the menu. Oh, you see how it's mass effects rigid body on that sphere? It's a modifier, just like anything else. I'll click here to display the Mass Effects tools. Now we have a few things already. Gravity is enabled. It has gravity along a specific axis. We can play with that. It's using the ground plane. So if I calculate this, start simulation. This is not by keyframe, by the way. This is just the computer calculating the, the calculations of this Mass Effects. So it's going to fall with gravity, and it's going to hit the ground plane. There we go. So it falls and it hits. Nothing terribly exciting yet. And we can stop the simulation with reset simulation. All right, if we took the ground plane off, it would go falling and falling and falling and falling. Let's rewind that. Let's change our gravity. So we have gravity going to the side. There we go. Looks a bit odd, but that can be useful in some cases, some animations. We'll put gravity back this way and everything's normal again. You can always reset whenever you want to. Now we have the ball falling. Let's make it a little more interesting. I'm going to add another object here. And I'll add a plane. So just a ground plane here. Like so. Uh, let's make that a bit bigger. Alright, so nice big ground plane. If I play, this is just going to go right through it. Because I have not set up the ground plane to be any kind of dynamic objects any kind of mass effect and you have to have these mass effects be set or else they'll just be non-existent to the object so with the ground plane selected I'll apply something to it and I'll make this a static rigid body so static mass effect it's not going anywhere so with that static what do you think is going to happen it goes and it hits that's great now I'm going to change some of these materials the plane the ground plane here I'll go down and change this into, let's see, preset. Those are wonderful. And I'll make this steel. And I'll do the same thing with the ball. And I'll make this steel. So now I'm going to have, let's rewind this. So now I'm going to have steel hitting steel in the simulation. Boom. Okay, just hits, boom, thud. All right. Let's try something else. Let's change it out to rubber. So rubber for the ball, a rubber bouncy ball. And for the plane here, I'll set this to rubber also. So it's going to be rubber hitting rubber. Bounces, of course. So it's a rubber bouncy ball on a rubber <laughs> floor. Now the reason it rolled like that is, and you can see the basic shape of the ball is normal. But the basic shape of the dynamic around it is a bit different. If we get into the actual shape of the hard rigid body. Let's stop the simulation here. And you can see that it's kind of almost like a soccer ball outline there. And that's how it's calculating the dynamics. So we'll change that. That's why it rolled. It hit on one of the edges and rolled. Not very good sometimes. So we'll go into the mesh type. And we can set this up. We can change it if we make a box that looks like this. We'll act very strange because it's a ball. If we do original, it goes with the original mesh. And that's the original ball there. So we'll do that and we'll play it and see what happens 
and instead of going bouncing all over the place, it bounces like a regular ball without any influence or anything, and just bounces up and down. Okay, so I've got two things going so far. We've got this ball hitting this plane, and it bounces. So we have our dynamic and our rigid bodies. Let's add a third type. The third type is the kinematic. Now, I'll build something else to be the kinematic. I'll start another ball, I think. So just another sphere out here. And I'll build that. I'll move it up just a little bit, and I'm going to have him roll along the surface kind of thing. So I'll start him about there. I'm going to set up some keyframes here, auto keyframes. So regular, normal, as you animate keyframes. I'll set this going for about eight frames, I guess. I'll have it animate over this way. And I'm going to have the computer take over and calculate the physics on a certain time. So I'll set this to a mass effect type. This is going to be that kinematic. So kinematic is basically calculating when we let go of the keyframes. I don't need the auto key on for this at all either. I have my keyframes set at zero and at eight. And then with this being a kinematic, we have the option of taking over at a certain time. And we'll have the rigid body type kinematic until frame. That means it's going to be that when it switches to dynamic. So it's going to switch to dynamic on frame, well, it's about frame seven, I think, and then let it go. So we'll calculate it. And it's going to go on its own at frame seven. So it keeps going and keeps rolling. Let's take a look at that again. And it missed the ball. I wanted to hit it, but okay. So it missed a little bit. Let's change that. And try to get it to hit it just for fun. So slowly go through. By the way, if you scroll through it, it won't work right. You have to actually set it up to bake the scene. We'll go over that in a little bit. So my aim is off here. I'm going to change my aim a little bit. And I'll move this over and try to hit the ball just for fun. Hopefully I can hit it. See what happens and calculate it again. Ah, I still missed it. One more try because I'm frustrated with that. And I'll go out to my frame 8. Let's move it this way a little bit more. Try to hit it this time. And calculate. <laughs> I am just no good at this. One last time, I promise. And I'll back it up a bit like so and see if I can't get it. Okay, I just quit. So anyway, this thing is rolling around all over the place. And we've got a kinematic body. If it's kinematic, you set up the keyframes on it. Now, to keep it going that way, we have to bake these. And by baking, I mean you're just kind of setting it up where it's going to record the actual keyframes. Let's see what this one does. Jeez. So I'm going to set it up to actually bake these keyframes as soon as my frustration gives in here. All right. Let's try the simulation again. I just I have to hit that bloody thing. I have to. I have to. Last time. This is why I don't play video games. Oh, totally frustrating. Animation is a painful business, isn't it? All right. Let's see if I get it. All right, I know I'm driving you crazy. I don't care. Let's go back one more. Let's see if we got it. You're kidding, right? You're kidding. You've got to be. Okay, I'm going to go frame zero, and I'm going to make myself go really slow. So here we go. I quit. I quit. I quit. I absolutely quit. Okay, so basically, here's what we do. I'm going to bake this. Over and bake, it's going to actually put in the keyframes. It calculates them. Now this is a kinematic, so it goes over where we hand animate through there, and it calculates the rest. So if I play it now, this plays along. Well, that was a calculation on there, but if I actually play it, we have the baked thing moving. The other thing isn't moving because we didn't bake it yet. So I'll bake that now, I'll click that, and we'll bake it. So it just calculated what happens there. So when I play the regular keyframes, everything's going to be moved because everything is baked. So that's what we've got.
the bouncy ball and my horrible aim right there. So there we go. Once it's baked, it is an existing keyframe. And you can play with them as keyframes. You can also unbake bubble. You can unbake things, so that's kind of nice. Um, that pretty much concludes the tutorial. Except for one thing, I'm going to try to hit this bloody thing because I am so frustrated and I'm going to go back and try to smack that because I am just so darn angry. So let's try to hit this thing. Let's calculate it again. By the way, you're done. You can just watch me miss and miss over and over again and try to correct things. But we're basically done here. I'm just kind of... Yay! I hit it! Okay, cool. Good. Now, let's bake it and bake the other one because I have, finally, a simulation I like. That one's baked. This is a good example here. We know we hit it, but only one is baked, so it's just going to go like that. Isn't it funny? Because it's already hit that steel ball. Remember that steel? So, or is it rubber? Wow, the other one must be pretty light. So, I'll bake the other one so it joins in. And now we have both of them baked. So it looks like a regular scene now. I play them both together and they interact and it looks great. So there we go. Uh, so this is a funny odd roll. That's because we didn't reset that to the original mesh, the original shape of it. So it's still got that strange kind of soccer ball dynamic sensor going. Okay, that concludes it and thanks for being patient and letting me finally hit that ball.